Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. We can hear you very well. Good. Uh, I think we can start. Uh, I guess more guests are coming. I think it's okay. Since uh, the most important part uh, for you uh, will start a uh, few minutes later. Okay. Okay, let's start. So, good morning or good afternoon uh, for everyone, our dear guests. Uh, thanks for your drawing for today's uh, webinar uh, of the introduction of ZWCAT Silver Solution. Actually, it is one of the ZWCAT uh, Silver Engineering Solution add ons, which was developed by our Israel developers. C1 designed. So um, please allow me to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Brian. I'm the channel manager for India, uh, Russia, Turkey market. And today it's my honor to have our developer partner, uh, Slomi Sivan from Israel to give us a presentation about their add-on application running on ZFCAT for civil engineering. Okay, so uh, Siromi, are you with us? Yes, Hello. I am. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so uh, since uh, this civil engineering solution add-on is running on ZFCAT, and I think some of uh, our guests there the, for the first time to evaluate uh, that we can with this silver add-on as a whole solution. So I think uh, it's my responsibility to give all, all of us a brief introduction about uh, that we shop as the developer for that we can. Okay, so today, uh, wait. So today we will have two parts. The first part is a brief introduction about Zedri Shop. And the second part will be the main course, the introduction to Zedri Cat Silver uh, Solution by Silver Design. So let's see who we are. So Zedri Shop is a international cat camp solution provider with more than 20 years history. As you can see, I have the read out. Our mission, our vision is to be the world's leading engineering software providers. And our mission is to provide reliable all-in-one CX solution to establish a sustainable and all-wing ecosystem for engineering software industry and to promote industry innovation and progress. So that is a uh, international CAD CAM solution provider. Uh, the photo you can see here is the uh, head office building located in Guangzhou. Actually, we have seven branches uh, in China, United States, and Vietnam. And there are going to be more overseas office in the coming years. So, up to today, we have more than, uh, actually the exact number of our start number is 966 today. And um, more than 40% of our uh, staff are R&D engineers in five R&D centers located in China and United States. So here you can see the two photos of our uh, overseas offices. Here, I want to show you some milestone of our company history. Actually, frankly speaking, ZBell Shop is started from a small company as an interior design application developer since 1992. And we entered into uh, overseas market since 2004 with our first generation 2D CAT solution, ZWCAT uh, 2002 in the years. 
Uh, since then, uh, Zero Care has been improved and uh, upgraded by three generations. Actually, every year we have a new yearly version and several SP version. In, 19, in 2010, um, we finished the acquisition of the United uh, States company, VX Tech, and we released the first 3D CAD CAM uh, version, Z3D 2010. So as you can see, during these 20 years, we keep improving, uh, innovating, and adopting new technologies. And in last year, we entered into a new field that is simulation software market. We released the first version ZBIS SIM last year. So as you know now, we have three major product lines. ZBCAD has the 2D CAD solution mainly for AEC and mechanical industries. And we have ZBIS3D as all-in-one CAD CAM solution for manufacturing industries. Besides that, we have ZBSIM as simulation solution for, for these industries, especially for mechanical industries and, and manufacturing engineering. So uh, meanwhile, we have uh, our powerful 2D viewer, Cap Pocket and the 3D Viewer Cap Pro uh, as a uh, collaboration tool for our customers. So all these solutions are based on our old kernel technology, I have to emphasize. Because we have an old kernel technology, we are able to develop uh, more possibility in our solution, uh, like uh, we are developing BIM and the PRM as well. So now, um, as an important CAD CAM CAE solution uh, player in this market, we have released uh, our product in 15 languages, popular in 90 countries with more than 900,000 end users. So uh, in China, actually, ZVSOP is the number one CAD CAM solution provider. And in some other country, for example, Poland, India, Korea, Brazil, we are also among the top two uh, market share holders. So we believe that uh, our success is based on uh, uh, not only because our good product, but also uh, good support with our local partner uh, up to today, we have more than 260 uh, local resellers. They are supporting our customer daily. And also we provide direct support to them as well. Here you can see some uh, comments from our customer about our product. So uh, you can find more such a good work for our product in our uh, website as well. I have to say, we are quite proud that uh, our customer is happy with our solutions. So here I want to show you some of our customer names. I believe you can find uh, some big name in your country as well. They are also our customers, uh, such as Engine, the leading energy company in Europe. And uh, here you can also find some uh, a big company, a regional big company like LNT, Tata, and uh, Jamil. Uh, they are the biggest manufacturer in the countries. And also you can see we have uh, some AEC customers like uh, Balasta Nadam in Netherlands. This is the biggest AEC com uh, group in Netherlands. And we have VC in French. Uh, they are also the top top one uh, in construction industries. And uh, not only in AC and make me can manufacturing industry, but also uh, we have customer from shipbuilding uh, industry, for example, 
in Turkey, we have uh, Tarshan. And in Middle East and India, we have Aries Marine. And also Kirby. Uh, we have more of such successful customer uh, examples, which you can find from our website. So this is just to give you some uh, names. And uh, I have to say they are quite happy customer and uh, loyal customer. For example, like Jamil, uh, they have their company are totally using our solution instead of the competitor solutions during the last five years for more than 1,000 licenses. So um, I think our success is beyond our product itself, but also because we have some global uh, developers supporting our, our platform with their uh, add-on solutions. For example, like uh, Covadis in French, this is a very famous and popular uh, geographic information solution applications. And uh, for example, in United States, we have 2020 CAP, which is also a very popular uh, space planning solution. And uh, today, I think our star is uh, Zedra Silver from Israel. This is one of the powerful uh, silver engineering solution now is running on Zedra Cat. So um, next, I will give the time to Silomi Siwan to give us a presentation about this solution. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, Brian. Uh, I hope everybody hear me well. Yes, uh, I can. So I, 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 by your permission, I will take uh, the screen. Is it okay, Brian? Okay, please. Please. Okay, so everybody, good morning. Uh, I will take the lead from here. Uh, so my name is uh, Shlomi Sivan. Uh, you can see my contact details uh, here, and uh, also uh, you can visit our website for download the uh, trial version. We have some new tutorials, so you can go to the support and uh, download uh, or watch some of the tutorials for practice. Obviously, we are here for any question. You can uh, contact us, email. We have a chat box on the homepage, or you can con contact me directly here. Let me start uh, immediately. Uh, so what is uh, ZWCAD? ZWCAD uh, Civil. ZWCAD Civil, it's a uh, software which is based on the technology named CivilCAD, which was developed for more than 20 years, actually since 1999. Uh, it has uh, thousands of users, uh, but of late we have done in the last one and a half year an intensive integration efforts with uh, the WCAD company to integrate uh, our system with the ZWCAD drawing environment, use it as our drawing environment. Together, it's a complete solution for civil engineers. Um, first of all, it's simple. I think that the biggest advantage of the ZWCAD civil that it's very simple to understand. Of course, simple, it's still a civil engineering solution. So you have to learn it, but definitely if I compare it to other competitors in the market, it's one of the easiest and simplest solution to gain results quickly. It's fast. It's work fast and give you results fast. It's agile. When I say agile, it means that everything interacts with each other. You change the horizontal alignment, for example, your um, profile you will change. You uh, uh, change uh, some of the surface and the uh, air forks and volumes will change accordingly. And the last one is robust without um, 
although it's as simple and fast and agile, we have not any done any compromises on the robust issue. It means it's very powerful. It has many capabilities. I hope you'll have a taste when I do the demonstration now. Uh, with our further notice, let me show you the agenda for today. I'll start with introduction. Introduction to ZWCAD work environment. I will continue with uh, creating contours and the 3D terrain. From there, I will start with uh, designing a road, horizontal alignment of a road, a profile of a road, vertical alignment. I'll go to design some cross-section using templates. And then I will add a side ditch, a, a drainage. I will do some earthworks calculation around the roads. We'll add a, a pipeline, a, a sewage pipeline on my road. And then combine the pipeline with the road itself. Then we'll have a room for question and answers session. Uh, unless anyone has question now, uh, um, anyone, you may write me, you can stop me. Uh, I'm here for questions. Unless you have any questions now, I will, without further notice, go directly to the live demonstration. So anyone, any question for now? Yeah, I think we have a uh, guest uh, raise the hand. James, please. No, I don't have a question. Okay, uh, any question is welcome. Thank you. So uh, any other guest, you have question, please uh, raise your hand. Uh, please feel free to talk with us. Okay, uh, second one. Okay, let's. Hello. On next more. Uh, Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, please. My name is Onesmo from Tanzania. Welcome. Nice to talk to you. Yeah. I've been working with Sean for some time. Uh, what is uh, if 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 I opted to upgrade my previous civil card with ZW? Is it possible to to upgrade my previous version with this ZW card no? Hello? Um, yeah, the answer is yes, you can. Uh, first of all, good morning and thank you for the question. Yes, you can. Uh, later on, you can discuss with us offline, meaning by email or if you want to use the chat that we have at the homepage of sivandesign.com and then we give you all the details how it can be done, etc. But uh, in principle, it looks very simple. If you know civil card, it would be very easy, easy for you to migrate to ZW card civil. Okay, okay. Uh, this one I will talk later with you directly. I had a problem with communicating with your civil civil card the website. Uh, we had a big problem with the communication. I don't know what is the problem, but we can talk this later. Okay, thank you. Okay, you write to me directly with the details that I showed you before. Okay, okay. You can even use my WhatsApp. It's here. Yes, next one, please. Bulaji. Mr. Bulaji? Hello? Yes, good morning. Oh, good morning. Um, okay, basically, uh, I just wanted to ask, um, can we do a 3D visualization of the road after we finish the design in um, the WS card? Uh, well, there is some kind of visualization, but uh, honestly speaking, it's not a full uh, visualization environment. You'll have to use the visualization tools for to get the full visualization. I can recommend you on some which can um, take the data from uh, ZWCAD civil and, and then you can use them for the visualization. If you okay, like. okay, okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. James. Mr. James.
Mr. James Mwangi. Mr. James Mwangi, if you have any question, if not, we'll go to Mr. Bukar. Mr. James, do you have any questions? Or oh, Mr. Bukar? Please yes. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, my question is uh, the ZW card civil. Uh, can I, uh, is it an alternative to civil card with uh, AutoCAD? Yes, it is. I... It's, it's, okay. a complete, it's a complete alternative. It actually works. If you know civil card, it will be very easy for you to work with ZW card civil. It looks very similar. The good things is um, it works perfectly with ZW uh, card. And the ZW card civil itself, it's cheaper than civil card, by the way. It's cheaper. It costs oh, uh, less, less, it's less expensive. So you get two advantages. You get ZW card, which is uh, less, it's more affordable, and ZW card civil, which is more affordable. And the capability, and the capability is uh, same as civil card? Same, exactly the same. No, oh, excellent. Mm. That's great. Yeah, I'll call you on Mr. Bandicom because we need to work on some jobs. Uh, so I'll call you on Mr. Bandicom. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Okay. Um, let's give the room for two more questions and then let's go for the live because many here. You know what? Let's stop the QA session now. Let me do live demonstration. And later on, if people who have questions, definitely. We we'll can leave the room. Uh, those that want to stay will stay, and those that want to leave will leave. So please, Mr. James, uh, others, give us, give me the next uh, 40 minutes to show the system itself, and then uh, we can have this further discussion. So hope everybody can see my screen. I just start ZW card civil. Immediately when I start it, it's load the ZW card. Immediately the system will load ZW card. So wait for a minute, please. Yeah. I hope you can see my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Um, I hope you can see my screen. Um, what we see here is the drawing environment. What we see here is the drawing environment. This is ZW card as you know it. If I want to go in and do a polyline, I can do a polyline. We have not touched anything in the drawing environment. This is a regular standard ZW card with all its capabilities. On the top, on the top here, you can see the menu of ZW card civil. On the bottom here, you can see the topography coordinates editor. It's an editor. When I say an editor, I can type in coordinates here. But you know what? Let's start a new project. And I will start a new project and I will call it intro, introduction. So now um, you can see on the top project intro. And what I will do, I'll use this coordinate editor here, and I will let coordinates, coordinate number one with an X of 1000 and Y of 1000 is in the north thing, elevation of 100, but 32.2, 150 on 150. This is the elevation 0 0.3, 150 on 1002.56. Um, elevation will be 100 and 4.6 and number four would be 1003.76 on 1056.78. And the elevation would be, let's say, exactly 100. And let's, I'm, I'm using the button here, I call it refresh button. I click it on the top. And immediately, ZW CAD Civil convert this coordinates into a map. 
So you can see the drawing, the points here. These are standard uh, blocks sitting in a, in, in, in a layer, a new layer that was created by ZW Card Civil. Here are the four points. Excellent, I have four points. Now I want to remove this, to close this window so I'll have more drawing environment. And now I want to create contour lines. Contour lines, I mean 3D model. I'm going to topography, contours, interval of 25, 0 0.25 meter. And I'm getting contour lines. So you can see I have contour lines each 0 0.25 meter. I got my 3D model with points each 25 meters. It's very simple. The beautiful thing is that now this is a 3D environment. It means everywhere where I pick here, I will have the, not just the X, Y, but also the elevation. You remember that before I used to enter coordinates here on the editor. Now I'm using a different option. This pick menu here, I click it. When I click pick here, ZWCAD Civil ask me, pick a point and I will name it 1005. This is the name, it's not so important, you can change it. So let me put somewhere here. I click tick, you can see the point here, 1005, X, Y, and Z. Automatically the ZW Cut Civil extracted the elevation from the 3D model. If I refresh, I will see the full point, here it is. Now I want to create some kind of a, a, a hill here. So I'll take the editor, 1005 here on the lower button, change the elevation to 108.375 and refresh. Here it is, 108. And refresh also the model. You can see now that I've created some kind of a hill here in the center. Excellent. So we had a, a, a what we call introduction to the environment. We saw the drawing environment, we saw the menu, we saw some functionality of the topography coordinates. I can even create a section, a quick section, design section from this point to this point. Uh, let's do it at one to two scale. Here, this is the section. I started from one point to the top, the hill that I've created and the top. This is a section of the ground. We call it quick section from one point to another point. This is the section of the ground. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear, um, but this was only to taste. Now let's go quickly into the next stage and let's design a road. Let's design a road. I will open a new project. This time around, I will call it, I will create a new folder to organize it and we'll call it roads intro. Roads intro. And here I will call it roads intro, the same project. Okay, this is a new project, new environment, but this time, I will not type, of course, the coordinates. I will load them. I will load the coordinates file, which was received from a, a photogrammetry, but it can be a, any survey instrument. I press load here. I'll go to top of, this is the point. This is the file. You can see there are many points here, actually. Many points here. In fact, if I want to check, I have 13,541 points. I can see it on the right. I go to options, the standard. And I will use the same refresh. I wait for a few seconds. And now the system will take this entire 13,500 points and create a map out of it. 
let's see. Here we have it. Okay, so this is the full map, the points which I has like before. And now I'll create contour lines. I use the same style that I used before, topography, contours, and this time I will use 0 0.5 meter for the vertical interval and apply. Okay, so let's wait for a few seconds. Of course, this is a much bigger, much bigger environment. So let's see. Yeah, I think it's almost done. Here it is. These are the 3D contours of my environment. You can see the contour lines all along. Now here, I see some abnormal behavior here and here. Those of you that knows how to work with other uh, road design or civil engineering software knows that we call it um, the border problems. Now I can fix it by defining the exact border or I can let the system fix it automatically. I'm using a parameter named 60 here, maximum interpolation length and I press apply. The system will now try to automatically identify abnormals on the boundaries and reset it. Let's wait. Okay, here it is. Okay, excellent. So all the abnormals were fixed. Now I have exact boundaries as I would like them to have to be. Good. So I have a free model, 3D model of my drawing. Let's save what I've done so far. Great. Now I want to start design my road. What I'll do, let me take and use the layers here. First of all, I'll take all the points. You see a ZW cut civil, I'm using a standard, but you can create your own standard, but I'm using a built-in starter standard of layers with colors. I will use this layer and change it into dark blue. Okay, now it's better. And I see there's some kind of an alignment here. I create a new layer, I'll call it my center line, my road center line or my road, my center line. Make it the current layer and give it a color white. And I will start somewhere here in the middle of this, start somewhere here. Polyline, standard polyline. Let me have the object snap. Start here. Go all the way up to here. Here I will do some turn this direction and then I join this. I think this is another road somewhere here. I will join it as well. So this is my horizontal alignment. This is a change. I see there's a small drop here on the contours. Okay, I hope it will be okay. This is my alignment. But for now, it's just a polyline. I will then open roads, horizontal alignment. Let me close this window. On the right, I have a new window. I'll press select, go to the drawing, select the polyline. And now the system automatically converts it into a road. You can see the IPs, intersection point, four intersection point, one at the beginning, here, here, and here, and four coordinates here. If I press apply, I will get, I will get the road. Okay, so now the polyline has become a road. You can see it's a road with the coordinates on it. Sections by the default is 25 meter between sections. Let's go to this IP, but of course, I want to create some kind of a curve here, a curve here. So let's define it at a curve of 100 meter.
I've touched the 100 meter, and here it is. This is the core. This is the 100 meter core, and the details of the core, the radius, the length of the core, the angle of the transition of the change, the tangent point is exactly here. And there's another tangent point exactly here. Good, I'm happy. Now I'll do the same here. And let's make it here. I'll make it just a sharp cut. So maybe let's make it 15. Okay, fine, good, good. Yeah, but now I want to change a little bit my alignment. Um, here, I want to take it a little bit to the center here somewhere. Now, since it's a road already, I will use the mouth move, move which I have here below, grab the IP, select the base point for this place and, and stretch it into here. Uh, here. Okay, I've done it. Here is the new location. In if I press apply, the system will automatically update the road with all its data. Here it is. This is the new. Of course, this is the original polyline. I don't need it anymore. So this is the new location. I can do the same for reduce for everything. Questions so far. Questions so far before I continue to the vertical alignment. Any questions so far? Guys, this is the time. Any questions so far? If you have, if you don't have, I will. Hello, Salome. I think we have a question in the Q&A box. Can we yeah, do a 3D visualization of the road? Uh, yeah, it was asked before and I answered. Uh, we have some um, 3D visualization tool inside, uh, but it's um, it's not a complete visualization. So for a complete visualization, you'll have to use external tools, which ZWK TV knows how to interact with. Later on, I can recommend on some tools and how to do it. Okay, thank you. More question? You can ask or you can... Uh, oh, we, we have a question. No question. Mr. Buka, you have a question? Yes. Uh, I, I, miss the, I miss the part that uh, uh, when you are trying to create the horizontal alignment, so you go to the road and then uh, evoke horizontal alignment, do you need to select or pick the, the polyline you have for the Hello, Mr. Buko, you are breaking. Yes. Uh, hello, Mr. Buka. Can you raise your question again? Hi. Mr. Buka, we can hardly hear you. Sorry, Mr. Buka, we cannot hear you. Maybe we try later on. Uh, uh, but I will try to be quick on what you just said and from what I caught. Sorry?
Maybe Mr. Buka, can you type your question in the yeah. chat box? Exactly. Type in your question, please, Mr. Buka. We lost him. I think he's offline. Okay, let me continue when he comes back. Maybe we'll type it in and anyhow, we'll have an, another room for question and answer. So let me remind you, this is the horizontal alignment. Let me now go to the vertical alignment. I'm going to rotes, vertical alignment. I went to rotes, vertical alignment. And now the system changed the drawing open a new drawing. The original horizontal element is here. This is a new drawing. I press apply. And then what I will get is automatically the profile along my alignment. This is the profile. So from here, the roads climbing a little bit, then we saw this drop. Here, what I can see is the horizontal alignment. Stand the tangent start from here. You can see the radius. Actually, the horizontal alignment behavior, we can see it here. It was a straight line and then a turn, and then a turn, and another turn. Yeah, and all the data. Now I'm using the same style which I use for the horizontal alignment. I used to the vertical alignment. I'm drawing a profile. I will start here somewhere. Uh, let's use the object snap settings to endpoint. I will start not the ground level, let's start a little bit higher. Let's say it's almost one, this is one meter from here. And from here, I'm going with a steady slope, let's say up to here. Here I'll use to stick the ground level. Me hold the object snap going down to this point, and from here going up. And here we stick the ground, the exact ground. Object snap again. Good. So, this is what I've designed as an initial profile. I press apply, and the system automatically take this polyline and convert it into vertical alignment. Here it is. You can see it right away. So, this is the profile. This is the profile that I have with the slopes. Uh, let me change the slope appearance into percentage. Here it is. So there is a very sl slight slope in the beginning. You know what? Let me change it. Make it 1%. I'm using the table below. 1% up. Okay, so I'm filling here at one percent, cutting a little bit, and here for now. Let me change this slope as well, not 4.6, let's change it into three and a half. Here it is. Good. So this is my profile, but of course I have to create vertical curves. So what I'm doing, I'm using okay, I am I, I'm using the table below and I'm adding the length instead of radius this time around I will use the length. So this is 25 meter, 25, I'll use 50 meter. 50 meter length, let's see. Good. This is good for me. And from here, I'll use another 50 meter length as well. 
Excellent. Excellent. Uh, you know what? I want to change the stock even to two and a half percent. Okay. This is two and a half percent. Now I have my profile. This is my profile. This is how I decided to design my profile. Of course, all the data is updated automatically in the table below with the designs, the peak, the height peak, and so on and so forth. Any questions so far on the profile? I have a question pending from before. I have a question pending from before. Uh, do we need to select the polyline to create the horizontal alignment or it's auto attic after drawing the polyline? The answer is uh, uh, we have to, um, you will have to select it. You have to select, go to the drawing. You have to press select on the right, go to the drawing, select the polyline and press enter. This is what you have to do. So the answer is that you have to select. More questions, please. Question? Yes, please. Yeah, I'm on this one again. I yes, have two questions on, on this stage of vertical and horizontal. Yeah, one question is automation on the creation of alignment. Mm -hmm. Is there any section of required your global standards like uh, maybe if we have in some standards we have maximum slopes you have minimum slopes we have minimum radius we have maximum radius we have uh, minimum k value or extra something extra like this is there any automation inserted in the zw card civil for this requirements that is question number one number two in the up to now, up to this stage, most of the working environment is almost similar with the previous civil card we used to use. I haven't noted any difference. Can you at least at this stage mention a few differences on the our traditional civil card environment working environment with this ZW card civil? Those two questions up to this stage. Yes. Thank you for the question. So let me start with the first one. We have some standards uh, limitation, but it depends when. You say the minimum K value, I'm not sure we have. I think we, you can create some limitation on the slopes, depending on the speed. Definitely when you are doing super elevation, we have built-in standards. Uh, on profile itself, I'm not sure we have. I think you can create some kind of uh, uh, end criteria. Uh, uh, that the system will alert from you. I know of some standard which we, we have in uh, super elevation when it comes to roads, <laughs> on drainage, on the uh, distance between infrastructure. We have some standard which you can predefine or are predefined and you can update them. I'm not sure on specific on slopes, for example. Uh, as for the drawing environment, no, uh, you actually, uh, touch it correctly. There is no difference. You are working with your standard uh, civil card, but exactly the same as you work with uh, civil card, you work with ZW card. It's actually the same 100%. There's no difference. No, no whatsoever. Obviously, uh, there are some difference between uh, ZW card or civil card uh, 10.2 to, for example, ZW card or civil card 2016. We've added some, some features, but once we add a feature to civil card or civil card, it automatically come to ZW card civil. It's the same, same capabilities. I hope you answered your question. Any other questions? Any other questions? Ladies, gentlemen. Yes, Mr. James. Hello. Yes, please. 
Uh, is it possible to create uh, two alignments? Let's say it's a dual carriageway. Yes, of course. Of course. First of okay. all, yes, you can create as much alignment if you like. In fact, uh, ZW Card Civil allows you, first of all, to use one alignment with as many carriageway if you like, but you can also de de design it as two separated alignment two separated cross sections, and then create what we call uh, get uh, side roads, which automatically uh, uh, what uh, ZWK Civil does, it take the two roads and combine them together into a single uh, cross section. Or uh, not just cross section, single profile, single cross section, single horizontal alignment, uh, profi uh, profile, yes. So definitely yes, of course. Okay, thank you. More questions, please. The Q and A. I see some questions. Oh, this one. Yeah. Can we load standard values as part of initial setup or configuration K values? Okay, I think I answered this already to uh, another in another session. I already answered. Other questions. Not for now. Okay, so let me go into let me go automatically into ah I can now go back to my horizontal element and project what we have already, which are the uh, elevation along the the road, right? Because we have a profile already. So here it is. Now each cross section will have an elevation along it. Good. Now I'm going to the cross section. When I'm going to the cross section, I'm getting a new environment. The drawing environment is beneath. This is a new environment specifically designated for cross section. What we can see here is on the right, we see a list of section, now it's empty, drawing environment, existing ground level, and design level. I will start by creating the list. The temp I'm using the standard 25 meter, I've not changed anything. Then along this cross section, I will tell the software, go and get the topography points of each in each cross section. Here it is. This is cross section number one. Sorry, number zero. This is number one, two, three, four, five, six. I can flip between cross sections and see all the cross sections in the list. And all the data of the cross section, I see it here on the table. But now I want to design. I want to start here. And here I want to use a template. I'm pressing the low section from text file here for my templates, going to my documents, ZW Card Civil, templates, go to rural, and using a two lane to shoulder standard. Simple. This is the template that I used. 3.65 meter to the left, 6.5 meter to the to the right, two and a half percent, two and a half percent. This is the carriageway. We have shoulders of 1.75, 1.75, and from here, using a slope of one to two on fill. We can see the definition are here. In fact, we can see that if the structure height is 0 0.4, and the data for the elf walks appears here. Okay, and this is the existing. I have here also the cut area and the fill area, but it's too much information. So I'll use the options to off this and apply. Okay, now it's easy. So this is my cross section. This is my question which I used for the first 
section. But I, you want to use this template, copy it to the entire road. So I'm going to the last section, use the same one and do something that I call interpolate. Now the system use this typical cross section and project it all over. You can see I can flip between sections. You remember that I started in fill. Here, this is the fill. Later on, I'm going into cut area. This is cut. But obviously, if you look at this section, for example, uh, let's look at this one. There is no protective drainage here. So I want to create a side ditch here. I'm changing here on the left to left ditch. And I want to say the ditch, the left slope is one to one. The right slope of the ditch is also one to one. The bottom of the width of the ditch is 0 0.5 and the depth of the ditch is 0 0.6. Here it is. This is the ditch. You know what, I'll change it to 1.2 to 1.2 because, okay. Excellent. So this is my this is my section. This is my section. And I'm using the same now to the right side. I change to the right ditch, copy, paste here. Apply. Here it is. This is on the right. So I have to the left. I have to the right. I have my ditch. But now I want to project this ditch. I'm happy to all my sections. So I'm going here. This cell, right click in the mouse. And the system automatically send me. Send the whole ditch to other sections? Yes. To which sections? All. And do the same to the right ditch. Yes, all. And rebuild. So the system rebuilds everything. Here it is. Let's go from the beginning. Let's see what's going on. This is the first section. You see, this is in fill. Also, we have the ditch, 1.2 stop here, and then 1.1 here, 1.1 here. Same goes here, 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 here. In fact, I have all my cross sections ready. I can now use this to create a frames division, use a scale of 1, 2, 50 to 150 onto A0 paper. Okay. Ah, the system asked me for some kind of uh, block yeah, for my standard. I will remove this. Okay. So on A0, I got two sheets. You can see the cross sections with all the data arranged, ready to pre printed scales of 1 to 150 to 1 to 150. In fact, these are in layers as well. So you can take the ground, the grid, make it a little bit. This and the ground I make it a brown, the top uh, structure, top of the structure, the crown. That I, where is it? Structure, structure. Yeah, this one, structure. 
and make it let's say red good so now everything is ready to be printed I think I'm happy if I go back to my alignment and refresh the horizontal alignment automatically the system will take and create for me a complete layout a complete layout you can see all the data of the layouts are here all the data of the layouts are here in fact i also here i have layers predefined layers so i can use for example the ditches put in yellow and and uh, so on and so forth the layout itself maybe give it a color of Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Please, the floor is open. Um, we still have to show some kind of uh, design in a pipeline, which is what I'm gonna do next. But before I'm going to this, if anyone has questions, now is the time, please. Any questions? Ladies, gentlemen, any question? Shrom? Yes, please. Yes. If I send you back and the vertical alignment interpolation. Yes. yes. We, we had some difficulty in the civil card when you have a big volume of topographical points, then when we when you create the vertical alignment on the ground, I mean the existing ground, we have this uh, abnormal thing on the, you find like a peak, like V and peaks up and down, up and down in some places. It, it, does it appear in this ZW card also? Okay. Um, well, I have to, to say something on that. I understand you are talking, I'm going to the vertical alignment and sometimes and suddenly you see, let me go back. Here, for example, you see suddenly, okay. By the way, now the system at the ditch, the left and right ditch profile here automatically. But you ask a different question. You ask, for example, if the ground ever suddenly do a peak like this. Yes. I have to say something. The only reason for ZW cut civil or civil cut to do a peak like this is if something in the topography, if there's an abnormal in the topography itself. You have either a break line or either a point which is abnormal, it's either high, high or low. There are two ways to rectify this, three ways actually. One is go back to your surveyors, tell him you have this and this problem to identify where it is and ask him to rectify the elevation. Second is to go to the topography coordinates and horizontal alignment and fix it by yourself, either freeze. By the way, there are automation tools where you can tell the system, take all the points which are below or a higher than a certain point. For example, if you know that your entire project is very at the range of the elevation of 300 and suddenly, and this abnormal takes you to 350 or 500, then you can tell the system, freeze all the points which are above 400 and automatically the system will do that. The last thing, another option, if you still don't want to do it this way, you can go here in the profile, you see all this. These are running distance and the elevation that the system digitized. 
running, for example, in zero, this is the digitization. This is in 7.66, there's a change. In 12.36, there's a change. This is what the system digitizes. You can go here manually, either change it or even click on the serial number and just press delete and remove it. For example, I want to remove, let me give you an example. I'll take this and make it 130, which is definitely abnormal. Let's example, let's assume that this is what you got. Let's update. Okay, for example, this. This is the abnormal behavior. Usually it will happen, not usually. It will always happen because you have an abnormal survey point somewhere here in your terrain. You can either rectify it from the horizontal line, from the topography, or you can just trace it. I'm going here. I see that here, I'm using this X and Y here. Here I, I'm at 11, 12, somewhere here around. I'm going to the list, I see 12.36, This is abnormal. I can either change it manually or since I don't know, I can just click on segment number three, use the delete in my keyboard and delete, delete this. So the system automatically interpolates from 37.66 to 14.25. Let's press apply, let's see. Here it is. I've corrected the problem. I hope this answers your question, but this is specific questions. Uh, of course, if you want to do, let's continue the discussion. We have to do it offline with our support team. More questions, please. Please. Any more questions? Before I'm going to my sewage. So, okay, let me go to my sewage. I have my road and let's assume I'm designing a new sewage line along my road somewhere here. I'll create a new layer and call it my sewage or my pipe even, my pipe. And I will start somewhere here. This is the first manhole. Go to this direction. Let me remove the object snap. Let's say 25 meter. First one, another 25 meter, another one. Here, I want to pick it by manually. Let's say here. Here, I want to create another manhole on the shoulders. And let's say this is enough. Okay, so I have this one, which is the polymer which I draw for my sewage. You know what? To have a better understanding, let me take this. So, take the contours of the line of the road. They can also color which blends in there. Okay, now it's better. So this is my design. I'm going to pipelines, pipeline list. First thing that I have to do is define the diameter, the units, millimeter, and for sewage millimeter. The first pipeline, I will call it number one. And the type, it's a sewage pipeline. And it's a round profile, I press okay. Then I'm going to the layout. Select the same thing that I did for done for the road. Select the polyline, click. Automatically the system identify the vertex as manholes and create manholes on top of it. Let's wait. Here it is, this is manhole number one, manhole number two, three, four, five, six. And here on the manholes, I have a lot of data. So I'm also have something that 
ZW cut civil created for me, which are the aiding point. Let's put them as red. Ah, I like the design. Let's put them. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so it is line number one with manuals one, two, three, and so on. 1.1 1 .1, because this is pipeline number one. I'm going to the profile, pipeline sections. Again, this is a designated drawing environment. You can see below, you can see below where there's a You can see below that there is a table for the design. I'm pressing apply. And I'm getting my profile. But this is the existing ground level. I'm less interested. I want to see the top level of the road. So I'm going to design here on the table, get the design of the road. Here it is. This is my road which I've designed, this is the existing drawn level of the road. And all the data here, the diameter, the slope, wall thickness, material, so on and so forth. Let's look at the table. Let's look at the table. I'm starting with this first manhole. And I want to create a manhole which start at a depth of one and a half meter. So automatically the invert level is being created here. Then I want to create a standard slope. Here I see that the ground level is going at, at 1% and change probably because I enter into the shoulders. So I'll use 1% also here and press apply. Here it is, here it is. This is the 1% before my manuals. You remember the two manuals that are very close to each other when I enter the shoulders. Going forward, so forth and so forth. Good. Yeah, this is the entrance to the shoulder. Each manhole with its elevation, invert level and so on and so forth. Now I want to use the meter, let's say this is um, collector drain a, a sewage of 400 millimeter diameter. The material is PVC and manual size one meter, 100 cm. Here it is. The pipeline, the data, the slope, and so on and so forth. If I go now back to the layer, press apply, I can see the entire data. The 1% here, 1%, the slope, the length, the diameter, the invert level, the top level, invert level, and the height of the manual at each place. Great, great. What I want to do next <clears throat> is combine the two. Actually, I want to project the pipeline on my cross sections. I'll go to the cross sections the system. I'm using a function that we call utility here. Select the layer. Successful. And let's see if I go to Here it is. And just to complete the reference, say we know n one and a half meter, 
and then for to sell. Good. Let's see. Here it is. This is the sewage layout. This is distance from the center line, the depth, invert level that we have designed. Here we don't have it anymore. So it's in five, four, three, two. And if I want to recreate the frames, you should be able to see it already. Let's see. That's all for today. Yeah, I already exceeded by 15% at demonstration. So now it's pure question and answer. Uh, the rest of you, um, you may stay. If not, I want to thank everybody that joined us today. So again, question and answer session. It's free. This is the time before we wrap up. Anyone, any question? Yeah, please go ahead. If I send you back to, to cross sections. Yes. I, I don't know if in this session or there is another session, but it's about the super elevation automation. Uh -huh. That yeah. is one thing. The second thing is also about the visibility thing. You didn't talk either about the visibility application or yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I understand that you are a user of a civil card or the W card civil, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. From which country, please? Tanzania. Um, Gerard, Advanced Engineering Solution. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, so the question. The, I asked you about the super elevation thing. I asked you about the visibility thing. I also want to know about if there is anything to do with the uh, road marking advice or road marking design suggestions. Also, you didn't talk anything about the BEMs on the higher cuts or big higher fields. Well, as you start digging, uh, you, you touch many things that are still existing in the in the software and all, obviously we don't have time to cover. I've not touched a lot of things. I've not, not touched plots, development of a neighborhood, uh, as you said. Uh, generally, as you know, uh, super elevation, if you know the system is being designed from here. Sorry, roads, uh, that's tough. Okay, uh, super elevation I'm designing from, yeah. Uh, Super elevation, and uh, and uh, the visibility is to check visibility when you turn. Um, super elevation, it's here. Uh, the system gives you automatically advice. Um, it's identified that your structure, your road, is on minus one and plus one, the the segments, and it advise it identify two two turns to the right, uh, one with radius 100 and one with 150, and this is the tangent that the system does. Uh, if you create auto automatic, when you design the speed limits, let's say 50 or 60, it's in a local road with 3.65 and 2.5% uh, for the normal and the system radius too small. Okay, it gives you an advice if it's one of the registers too small for 60 and for the factors, but still, uh, it gives me abnormal things. Uh, let's say uh, 50. Just two. Just two. One IP2. It, it's, it's still things that on that speed I need to rectify it. So, this is what the system suggests. If I'm unhappy, I can use to correct it. Uh, 
this is six minus six, six and minus six. This is the super elevation and press apply. And that's it, I think the system that did it. Let's go into section, or oh, here it start from here, 15. There's a super elevation here, you can see. Let's see on the road itself. Okay, let's see on the curve. Okay, you can see the super elevation, the transition start from here, from the timber, from here, before we enter the curve and continue here. Let's see the, yeah, and the visibility is uh, to check the visibility distance in uh, high speed, okay? Um, so this is the visibility you can define that, uh, for example, uh, your stopping speed is, uh, I don't know, distance is, uh, let's say 60 meter. Uh, is, ah, okay, the visibility is 365 in this 75 due to this. And uh, uh, let's see if the visibility doesn't give us any alerts. So we are checking visibility along the road for all the sections going this way. Yeah, but again, I don't want to, uh, let me stop it now. It's not a training session, but it's okay, it's, yeah. More questions, please. Maybe people that, uh, other people, let's give the room for other people that less familiar with the system. Maybe they have a question. And then I see Mr. Bukar and Mr. Antsema has a lot yes. of questions. Yes, yes, please. Yes, uh, how, how can we underlay a Google image on the layout? How do you overlay again? I didn't hear the question, Mr. Buka. I said, I said, how do we underlay, if we want to underlay Google image, so if I impose Google image so that maybe for urban road, uh, you know, all the uh, features can be viewed. So how do we underlay Google image on the, on the ah, general layout of the- Google road? image. Well, Google image, you do yes, it- uh, Google image. Standard from AutoCAD uh, or from ZWCAD, you 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 create to a service, or you just uh, overlay an image, regular image. You extract it and overlay. There's not something specifically for ZWCAD for it. ZWCAD civil, I mean. It's a okay. standard overlay in the drawing environment. By the way, Mr. Bukar, you are from which office? I I'm I, I'm from uh, Nigeria, from Sadi Mustafa. If you remember, I mean, you started training with, uh, with civil guard since 2000. Sunny Mustafa. Sunny Mustafa is uh, in Nigeria. Borno? Yes, Borno. Borno. Yes, uh, Borno. I hope everything is okay there with the book around. Yeah, yeah, fine. I'm with Lawan. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear. Good to hear. More questions. Yeah. I see some people which I know, Mr. Dor. Bar, Mr. Lee, Daudi, Katib, Kusmanto, Winston. Anyone? Questions? Let's give a room to people which are familiar. Okay. I see no more question on that side. No, no marking assistance on the WCAT even. No, we have not touched marking assistance. I see the question from Mr. 
Ohana. More questions, please. More questions. Any questions? Any questions so far? None. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Saron. Uh, and have a nice day, all of you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for everybody. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Salomi. It's a Thank great you. presentation. Bye -bye. Yeah. Thank you. How how can how can we get the recorded recorded presentation? Uh, Brian, did you record it? Uh, yes, I, no. we have recorded this uh, presentation, and later we will have the video available for our guests. Excellent. So please distribute okay. to them. And any question or any further material, you can also write to us, uh, write to Slomi and uh, or our local partners. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay noted. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank Have you. a nice day. Bye. Thank you.